Buggo Systems introduced the original Gopher back in the early 80s. It was designed to compete with the friction drive machines that were available at the time for straight line cutting in a downhand position. Since then, we've improved the machine considerably, and over the years we have developed all the way up now to the Gopher 3 kit. Big advantage over the friction drives is the rack and pinion drive, standard bug rail with the enclosed encapsulated wheels, and a positive clutching system, which allows freewheeling of the machine, but when the clutch is engaged, it is a positive clutch so the machine can run vertically, upside down, just about any position you need. The Gopher 3 kit comes, as you see here, with everything except the torch. The torch we can supply, but it is optional. The kit comes with the machine, the racking, the torch support, a quick action manifold, which serves two purposes. It becomes a hose strain relief, so that if there is any strain on the supply hoses, it does not affect the position of the torch. Also comes with a short hose whip from the manifold up to the torch. The manifold also is a quick action manifold, which allows a very easy on and off of the gases, so that once your torches are preset, you don't have to play around with the dials with the needle valves. You can simply turn the valve here, ignite the torch, start your preheat, and make the cut. Uh, the kit also comes complete with one eight-foot section of track with two on-off magnet assemblies and two support spacer bars. So you can buy this kit, add a torch, bring in some gas, and you're ready to go. Let's take a look at some of the features of the Gopher drive unit. Underneath you'll see the drive pinion itself. It's a chrome molly pinion that provides unparalleled durability. We call it the bulletproof pinion. You can see how the clutch engages and disengages it from the rack on the rail. We've got four double bearing wheels for extra support and rigidity. Two fixed assemblies. Those are permanently in place. Opposite those are two adjustable legs. By simply putting a wrench on the bolt that's holding the, the wheel to the leg, you can rotate this on an eccentric, and that's where you make your adjustments so that the wheels fit the grooves of the track perfectly. Up top, we see, again, very simple design, very user-friendly. Uh, we've got the racking system, which provides a horizontal adjustment, and the vertical adjustment is the machine barrel torch itself. You can also adjust different angles here if you're doing bevel cuts, chamfers, whatever. The controls themselves, very simply, a pilot light, a circuit breaker protection, a simple forward off reverse rotary switch, which provides dynamic braking by the way, so if you are in a vertical position, you stop the machine, it will not back drive down. There's a dynamic braking system that holds the machine in place when it's off. And then of course you've got a speed control. The various models go different speed ranges. The numbers on the dial are simply a reference number, 0 to 100 of the available speed. This being an oxy fuel gopher has a speed range of 5 to 50 inches a minute. That's about it for the controls. Again, it's very simple. I'm going to install it on the rail. To do that, I'll simply visibly align the wheels, make sure the clutch is out so the pinion does not hit the rack, and slide it onto the rail from one end. Pretty quick and easy. Now for uh, demonstration purposes, I've got a foot wide piece of regular carbon steel here. And I want to make a few trim cuts on it. Um, it's a variety of ways I can set it up. I could have a chalk line on here. If I'm making parallel cuts, I can simply line up to this front edge. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to line a torch up to this front edge and then make about a two inch wide cut. I've got plenty of racking adjustment, but there's no sense in having the torch hanging out in a cantilever too far. So I can just simply bring the whole machine over in place until I'm in the ballpark. And I'll now bring my torch down close to the workpiece so I can get some idea of where I'm at. And I can see I'm pretty rough right now. I'm not parallel with my workpiece. If I was doing a large workpiece, of course, I wouldn't be able to just shift it around. So what I'll do is I'll leave the clutch in neutral so I can manually roll the machine back and forth. Here I can see I'm perfectly aligned, splitting the torch centered on the edge. Here I'm about a quarter of an inch off. So if I just lock this one magnet in, give myself a pivot point, I can bump the rail over about half that distance, about an eighth of an inch, make my adjustments so I'm splitting the torch again, and now I can go back and check. Okay, I need to do a little bit more touching around, bump it a little bit more, bring it out, and 
after one or two bumps, I can be just about exactly parallel with the original edge. Just a smidge more. Okay, I'm lined up. Now I can simply rack back. I, again, I can have a chalk mark. I can use a measurement up here to get the width that I need. Make sure I'm clear. My hoses are all clear. And I can engage my clutch. I will set my speed just to show you the travel. Again, forward off reverse. I'll go down to a very small crawl if you're doing a very thick cut. It'll rapid faster than any oxy fuel cut will allow you to make. Cut in either direction, it really doesn't matter. Okay, we're going to turn it down to probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 25% of the travel speed available. That looks pretty good. We're probably traveling in the neighborhood of 20 inches a minute. Cutting the oxygens off, open our manifold up and ignite our torch. Load it up to preheat position. A little bit of preheat to get started. Cutting the oxygen in direction travel. Note the smooth, consistent travel, constant speed, constant path, produces a premium cut. I don't know if you've ever tried to cut a piece of steel like this with a hand oxy fuel torch, but to get a straight, consistent line is fairly difficult, even for the best cutters. With this machine, even a novice can make a fairly good cut. Here you can see the results of mechanization. To try to make a cut that straight, that smooth, that concise by hand is almost impossible. The simple principle of controlled rate and path produces quality results. Okay, we've seen what the Oxy Fuel Gopher kit can do. Let's take a look at the other kits available. The Gopher 3 is also available for a plasma cutting kit. The main difference is the Oxy Fuel manifold with a remote contactor box. Simply gives you an on off contactor switch here for your plasma arc and keeps the arc circuit isolated out of the machine in an isolation box so that it reduces high frequency concerns. The racking group is identical to the Oxy Fuel Kit because we use a machine barrel plasma torch here. If you need to weld with a gopher, straight line welding, um, again, very similar to the plasma kit. You get the contactor box and a strain relief. Same racking group, but in welding, normally if you're going to mechanize welding simply with a gopher, you're going to mechanize a handheld gun. So you need a vertical adjustment. That's provided by this GOF 3255 racking group. Simply install it into the existing torch holder. Now you can clamp your handheld MIG gun into the Fitzall clamp, and this provides your vertical adjustment, your horizontal adjustment for straight line welding. Okay, we've seen the Gopher 3 in action doing a straight line cut. We're now going to show you another handy accessory available for the Gopher 3. It's the Gopher Radius Rod Cutting Attachment Kit. To install it, simply turn the Gopher up, and there's a small section of rail that inserts into the base of the unit. It's got a drive gear that's going to be picked up off of our drive pinion. That gear is going to drive a gearbox, which turns the wheel that allow the machine to rotate around a center magnet point. <clears throat> Simply install the rail down into the machine. Make sure our pinion's engaged. We'll lock it in place with a thumb screw. <clears throat> install the radius rod itself. Lock it in place with a wrench supplied with the kit. And we can make our final dimensional adjustment with the magnet base itself. Simply we'll locate the center of the hole with a punch mark. You can use the center pin that's in the center of the magnet to locate the center of the hole. As I begin to set up for the diameter, uh, I notice the machine is not very stable. Besides the drive wheel, there is an idler wheel in the back. Uh, right now it's not making contact with the work. So I'm going to loosen the clamp on the magnet base to allow the rod to rotate. Now the machine's sitting nice and solid. Lock that back up. 
And again, I've made a rough adjustment. I can now make my fine adjustment with the racking that, main, that holds the torch position. That's about all that's necessary. And just as a dry run, you can see now the machine will rotate around the magnet base to make a circle cut. Okay, let's make a cut and see how it looks. So, fire it up. <coughs> There you can see the radius rod kit, cut a nice clean hole. Again, trying to do something like this by hand would be very difficult. Simple radius rod kit did the trick. For more information on the Gopher and other fine Bugo products, visit our website at bugo.com. I'm Mark Binder. Thanks for watching.